everyone. Welcome to another Animation Friday. I apologize this video has to unfortunately be uploaded late. Um, we've been, ha at least I've been having some issues with the volume. Hopefully it'll, it should be all fixed by today. Um, cause it has been working so far. Uh, and, uh, so without further ado, let me dive into what I actually wanted to talk about for this Animation Friday. And that's uh, famous voice actors. Um, voice actors, I think, have played a very significant role as far as shaping the uh, art form of animation. And I thought it would be interesting to briefly address some of those voices. Um, and uh, in doing so, um, kind of address ones that I've been familiar with, at least, or ones that I, I kind of... Um, got interested in, at least when I was trying to research some of these uh, voice actors, and also ones that I'm fairly familiar with, because there's some that I'm familiar with on this list, and there's some that I initially really didn't have a huge amount of clue, because a lot of the times when you're hearing voices, um, there's usually a varied amount of um, voices that voice actors have done over the years. Sometimes it's hard to really even tell who's who exactly because again they are such brilliant imitators um, but uh, basically without further ado let me address some of these first off being Seth MacFarlane um, regardless okay just just take whatever opinion you have of, on Family Guy American Dad or whatever else that um, Seth MacFarlane has produced over the years um, and T shove that out the window because I'm not talking about that. I'm talking purely from a voice acting standpoint. Um, and although he has been rather famous for doing Family Guy, uh, in particular, that's really the, uh, in large part, his where a lot of his talent as far as voice acting is concerned, he's also well known for, um, again, sort of presenting various characters and then doing so, giving them sort of that kind of voice, um, which is, I think, something that requires, I think, a lot of talent and energy and is something that I think in particular Seth MacFarlane does fairly well. Um, just how he can just start talking as if he is the character of Peter and then go to Brian um, and... Uh, Quagmire, as well as to Stewie, you know, just just the range, um, just based off of that one show, just shows you the amount of capability he has as far as a voice actor is concerned. Because, um, uh, you know, you the way in which he kind of presents his characters too is also through accents and through people that he's been familiar with or people that he's at least partially come to know over the, over maybe the, the years of, uh, throughout his entire life. So, cause he did start through, um, doing this kind of, uh, thing and getting into sort of the, the arts at a young age. So, um, I think that's really, uh, something that's very telling. And if you want to see the sort of talent and energy, um, that I'm kind of really talking about. Uh, watch when he's on the, um, I believe it's um, inside the actor studio, um, where it's not only him, but it's also all the other people that are the characters on the show. And you will just see how he just goes from one character to the other. And it's not just the voice, but it's also the character, because um, as he's talking to the one guy who um, hosts the show, you know, he asks him questions as if he is that character, and Seth MacFarlane answers in those questions as if he is that character, not just the voice. And I think that's what's really uh, important, and I think something that is clearly emphasized with his capabilities as far as a voice actor is concerned. Because, again, he did cr not only um, do the voices, he also sort of created these characters. And in doing so, he really knows how to embody that because it's not, he goes beyond just the voice and goes to sort of that uh, essence of the character. So I, I think that's really what has made him unique. Now, so whether or not you could say whether or not Family Guy's jokes are funny or if, you know, the 
uh, if the plots are all that interesting or whatnot. Um, I think what can be said, at least as far as voice acting is concerned, Seth MacFarlane, I think, excels at it fairly well. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, you can say whatever you want, but that's just my honest opinion. Um, and I think uh, the when you watch that interview, in particular the one where he is playing the characters, you'll sort of see what I'm talking about. But moving on to the next voice actor, Jim Cummings. Ah, uh, yes, this guy. Uh, he's actually one that I'm fairly familiar with, um, probably because he's been in so many Disney stuff. Um, and this is this ranges from films to cartoons, uh, like television shows. So he's done a lot. Um, and what I think stems from Jim Cummings' talent, as far as a voice actor is concerned, um, is sort of different from Seth MacFarlane because Seth MacFarlane's sort of like a creator, and you know he's really the um, sort of uh, predominant figure behind the whole project, at least the projects that he's involved with where he does a lot of the voice acting or at least the, at least a good portion of it. Um, here with Jim Cummings, what's great about his capabilities is, is that he can, he can imitate voices really well, like other people's voices. Um, if you want to see a perfect example of this, watch the scene in The Lion King where, um, Jeremy Irons is literally singing at one point, and then literally it changes to Jim Cummings at another point. Um, I still have trouble under seeing the difference, like uh, hearing the exact difference in the voices, because he just imitates Jeremy Irons brilliantly. I mean, I, I was blown away by when I heard that. Like, really, he actually, he actually was able to really mimic his voice. Like, I just thought that was just unbelievable. Like, the, you know, he he is a really well-done talent for that. Um, you know, and I think that's what has made him so good, is the fact that he can step into somebody's place and sort of, you know, ganger up the capability to mimic uh, a voice. Um, and also, he's done some fairly uh, original work, um, like playing various characters on Disney. Um, but at the same time, I think what's, again, stems, what makes him stand out is the fact that he can do this, this imitation so well. And um, is really what I think is great about voice acting and what some of these voice actors can do is, is they can just take somebody's voice and just make it their own somehow. And how they were able to do that is, I, I still think, is unbelievable. Um, and this is largely due with uh, with with singing for some reason, uh, you know, because he because that one portion that I that I talk about talked about with Lion King is is, you know, he imitates uh, Jeremy Irons' singing voice more so. Um, but again, really well done, uh, 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 voice actor, uh, just knows what he uh, just knows what he's capable of and performs really well. Another one that I wanted to discuss is one that I wasn't gen initially familiar with, but actually has a lot of influence. Um, and that's Mel Mel Blank 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 Blank. I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce the last name. But what makes him unique is the fact that he has played almost every major character on Looney Tunes. Um, and I find that to be, in and of itself, amazing, because if you do watch Looney Tunes, you do notice that there's very distinct differences between the way in which uh, certain characters sound. Um, uh, and you do see how, you know, they have a lot of uh, personality that comes out from them as well through the voice. And uh, Mel Blanc has been able to provide that throughout the years. Um, and I guess what has made him capable of doing this is the fact that he has been able to change sort of his pitch um, as well as the sound when he talks. Uh, so that's why he's been able to play uh, these ranges of different characters. And uh, he's also had, I think, a significant influence in radio um, and whatnot, 
And I think a lot of talent, like if you think of all of the people who do like radio talk shows and things like that, a lot of them have, at least I would say a good, a good chunk have probably done, done some kind of voice uh, acting or have contributed to voice acting because, um, you know, when you're doing radio, you know, you can't, re you can't present yourself, you know, you're just presenting your voice and your thoughts and your ideas. And uh, I, I think that really allows itself to be um, well executed in that um, voice actor medium well, or at least translates well to the voice uh, actor medium. So I think it's definitely um, a, a reason as to why Mel Blanc uh, at least has uh, been one of the one of the greats, at least over the years, um, and uh, what, and at least uh, I think developed um, a, sort of a, a passion and a career behind it because of the fact that he had so much other forms of experience that lended itself to voice acting, in particular being on the radio. Moving on to the second to last one, let me discuss Dan Kasten. Castellaneta, I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. Apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly, but he is the voice of Homer Simpson. So if you've ever watched The Simpsons, he is the voice of him, as well as dozens of other characters that are featured on the show. Um, what I think is great about him, and I did actually see a, an interview of him where he was talking about the, um, the way in which he kind of picks out... Uh, and uh, sort of does his characters is uh, somewhat similar to, I would say, Seth MacFarlane's approach where, you know, he's been familiar with people who are like a certain way and he was able to sort of talk like them somehow. Um, and in doing so kind of create, um, uh, create a, an interesting, uh, um, interesting character behind this actual person that, supposedly existed so uh and you do see how he really provides a sense of range and i think it's more so he, unlike seth MacFarlane, who's again these characters are very wacky and wild and out there a lot of what i think dan has used is not only based on off of experience but also um he he knows how certain people act and he so he knows how to act like them um more so than where it's where Seth MacFarlane is literally the brains and you know he, he really creates these characters from out of out of his own mind and psyche um Dan sort of creates or at least establishes the voices through um these various experiences that he's had in the past and also um you know, tries to act like the one character through through the voice. Um, and I think that's also something that's rather u unique uh, because um, he, he's able to just take something and make it sound something and in and, uh, and the second moment make make a sound that sounds completely different. So again, the, 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 the range and the scope, I think, is also something that's uh interesting um but again he it, it's not like um it's it just seems like more so he uh is good at really acting out the voice um whereas with Seth MacFarlane it kind of just flows more uh because you know he just kind of developed these characters sort of out of his own kind of imagination whereas I think Dan likes to kind of you know, display the characters in a way that is sort of reminiscent more so to his um, his his past and uh, people that he's he's known over the years, and I think that lends itself to a very unique perspective. And uh, I think he he's done a really great uh, great job, and you you can really tell when he when he talks. You know, there's there's there is a lot of uh, talent and energy uh, behind uh, what he's capable of doing. And last but certainly not least, Frank Welker. 
believe that's how you pronounce the last name. Um, what's interesting about Frank Welker is that instead of all of the other actors that I've been mentioning that mostly try to imitate more human-like voices and human-like characteristics, um, Frank largely bases his voice acting, like when you look at a lot of, or at least the majority of his voice acting library, a lot of it is animals. Um, and this ranges through Disney, through various other television shows and car and cartoons. Um, if you look at um, uh, the animals in Aladdin, like the monkey and the, the tiger, he plays both of those. Uh, so, and when you look at the uh, Little Mermaid, he actually plays the dog, Max. So, you know, it. I, I find that so fascinating that a person can imitate so well an animal. Um, and a wide variety of animals, um, from from tigers again to monkeys. Uh, you know, he has done a lot as far as uh, animals are concerned, and he seems to be that kind of voice actor that has that sort of niche and is able to do that style of voicing really well, which is something that you don't see often, at least in a lot of other voice actors that I've uh, had the um, ability at least to find. And also he plays a lot of robots too. I found that to be funny. Um, so very off the wall kinds of uh, characters, you know, not the standard more human characters. Uh, so I thought that was actually something that's that was rather fascinating because I, I, I just wouldn't think that somebody would be capable of really doing that. Um, and uh, he does it really, really well. Um, and I was really fascinated by it, and it makes the more sense that he would be on this list because, again, he has a lot of range. I mean, he has there's a lot, a lot of parts that he's been in. I mean, you could probably list a bajillion shows, and he would probably be in a good chunk of them, um, as well as movies. But I think that's ultimately all I can say. Those are all of the voice actors that I wanted to mention for this list. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a pleasant day, week, month, and year. I'd be more than happy to hear what your favorites are. I'm sure there's others out there that I'm either not aware of or I did not include for this list. But uh, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.